So we saw one way of uh, modeling, modeling this glass uh, using our primitives, using the cylinder tool, some bevels, and subdivision to create the more basic sort of uh, cup or glass shape that we're used to. But again, the one I use in this final render has this sort of um, interesting curve profile, kind of lays, rolls around the table, and it's just something fun uh, that I like. And that's an actual glass that I have. So I shot a reference image. So I'm going to show you how to bring in an image uh, as a backdrop item to model two. But before we get too long, I can either turn these items off and make a new one, but just for organizational purposes, I'm going to come down here in our oops, our item list, come to add item, locators, create a group locator. And now we're just going to call this uh, cup 01. And that's just a, a group. Uh, we could use that later on for animating the whole thing, but all we really want to do is create this item and use that for an organizational uh, tool in our item list before this thing can start getting pretty messy as we go along. So I'm going to hold shift in the item list and drag both those items up into that uh, cup group and turn them off. So we can turn that on or off as we work, but right now I just don't want to see that one. I want to start creating a whole nother mesh type. So to do that, let's create a new mesh, empty mesh layer. So add mesh. And now we have our empty mesh layer to draw some polygons in. But as I mentioned before, I want to use an actual image map or an image as our backdrop plane, something to actually draw to. So you don't have to guess what that curve is. So to do that, come back to our add item list, choose backdrop item from the list. And that's just going to simply add a empty sort of image uh, in the center of our world. Um, another shortcut you're going to use quite often is hit A. So hover your uh, mouse over this key, this viewport, hit A, A, oh, it's not, there's not one on the top, but that's just going to zoom whatever's in your scene, uh, just the center of that sort of selection. So if we were way over here, we couldn't find where that guy is, if I hit A, that's just going to center all the items in your scene in the middle of this viewport. So right now this comes in with no image map uh, selected. So that's down here on the backdrop item on the image properties, or the backdrop item properties, down this image uh, area. We want to add an image here. So we're going to add clip, load image. Um, you'll have this saved. Uh, this will come with uh, the tutorial. But I just put that in my image reference folder, class template, hit OK. And now it's added to our image browser. Click back here. Oh, I should need to select it. I'm sorry. Come back to the image browser. Click that image. And there we go. Now our image is inside the scene. And we can model to that. Uh, if you're doing a character face, if you're doing a car, anything you want real pre precise sort of modeling details, you don't want to bring in an image and model to it as a reference. Right now it's completely opaque, so I want to add a little bit of transparency to this image. So in the Transparency tab, just click and pull up to maybe 50% or so. And now we can kind of see you know, our wireframe through there. And this image was just quickly shot of the actual uh, glass. I, I have it myself. Um, but this is going to give us a template to draw this profile. If I shot that on black, that might have been a little bit easier to see these edges. You may not pick it up in the video recording, but the image itself, there's plenty of detail for us to follow this curve. So instead of uh, box modeling to that guy, uh, we're going to draw out curves to get there. Um, the first thing I want to do is center that um, backdrop item in my scene. So I'm going to select it in the item mode, drag and drop, or drag him over the move tool. So that's W for our move tool. And more or less, just kind of get the center of the cup inside the center um, of the scene. Space for our dropper tool. Come back to the empty mesh layer. And then just look at what we call the other one. We called him glass. Let's call this one uh, glass 02. And just, you know, keep, keep everything tidy. Keep all the other things organized. Always name your meshes. I'm going to hit save. And now let's start drawing a curve of that profile and then we're going to use a radial sweep to um, sweep that all the way around. 
Again, it's just a little bit different way to model this than we last saw in the last version. So what we want to do is use our curve tool. Um, so we'll come back to your basic tool properties here. And whenever you see this little uh, gray arrow, that means there's more items in that tool. So this is our pen tool. If I click and hold there, you'll see we have a couple different curve tools. We have just a general curve or a Bezier curve um, for more precise angling. But we'll, we're going to hopefully get away with just using this curve tool for um, our purposes here. So to use that tool, I'm going to zoom in right about to the center of where we want it. Click. And let's just start drawing that curve out. The first point you'll notice isn't actually round, because we only have two points, so it's drawing a hard edge. But if I drag another edge, you'll see now it's going to start creating this nice sweeping radius. So it's going to take a little bit of time to figure out how many points you need, when and where to actually draw these curves. But you can kind of see I'm doing more or less a nice even span and kind of hitting the major landmarks of that curve. If it's a concavity or convexity, angle, or just kind of, you know, it's this one's going out. Just kind of hit the major landmarks of that curve. So click the point you want to uh, work from and click and continue to add those curves as we go along the item. Now due to just how this image was shot, it's got a little bit of perspective to the bottom lip. We know we don't want that. We want to create a nice hard edge into the center, but really we also want to draw out the center of our glass as well. Before with a more cylindrical cup, we just beveled straight down um, from that closed mesh, but now we can actually start drawing the inside radius uh, thickness of this glass as well. So we're going to draw not only the outside edge, but the inside of the cup as well. Um, you can see there's a, you know, it's starting to kind of taper here. It's not, you know, completely thin. The bottom has a little bit of weight and thickness to it. So I'm going to click and pull and get right about here to the end. And as you can see, our curve is not perfect by any means. So let's go back and edit those points. So to edit them, you just hover your mouse over this one, and you'll see it's going to change from blue to yellow. So now we can click that guy. And we just want to start editing. Oops. We click off the points and create a new one. So just kind of click around. And we want to create a nice little curve here. Uh, or just clean up the shape of our curve. As you, you, know, you can see how it's going to uh, interpolate between each point. Let's just still keep it kind of a hard edge to about here. And we don't want the inside thickness of this is basically the thickness of our glass to be too thick. So we want to just keep those points, you know, as close matching that outer curve or profile as we can. It's going to take a little bit of time, a little bit of finessing, but eventually we'll be able to create a real nice curve. Um, as you can see here, we need an extra point on the outer edge of this. So if I want to draw a point between this one here, let's just zoom in here, between this point here and this point here, I'm going to select the first point, let's select him. Now if I click between those points, it's going to draw a new edge. And I can just kind of, basically I want to harden up this edge down here. So click this one here, click a new point. And now we're kind of creating the round lip of the mouthpiece of that glass. Again, we did that with uh, beveling in the last uh, tutorial. But here we want to just kind of create a nice little round mouth uh, lip so we don't actually cut ourselves on that glass. But, you know, again, it's a, it's a taste of finessing. We, we need a little bit more points. I'm going to click this one, click between these two edges, and there we go. We're starting to get, you know, maybe it's a little too thin. Zoom out a bit. Yeah, we're creating that a little bit too thin of a lip. But we're creating that nice basically the entire form of our glass in a 2D profile. Well, it's a little sloppy. You can go in there and really define these all you want. Bezier curves, if you're used to those, might be an easier way to draw these. As long as you have enough points to create uh, a smooth uh, interpolated curve. So now we have both the outside radius 
in the inside radius of that cup to find, and then we're going to um, lave that around or radial sweep it. So now that we have our glass more or less ready, actually I want to create one more point between these, this one and this one, just so the bottom's got a little bit of flatness to it. There we go. And we can always, you know, edit this after the fact, but right now I'm going to hit spacebar, drop our tool, and there we go. You can see it didn't actually create any geometry, it just created this sort of 2D profiled curve. We don't need our backdrop item anymore, so I can turn him off in the item list itself. And we don't need to see it. We could delete it if you wanted to. I do have a feeling that this is a little bit too thin for the thickness of our glass. So since this curve is just a series of points, I'm going to come in here to our vertex points, grab a few of these. Again, we haven't actually created polygons yet. We just created a few different points. Select them, grab my Move tool again, and just pull them over a little bit. There we go. Now our move, our glass is just a little bit uh, thicker there. But right now, if I did our radial sweep, these points aren't dead center of our scene. So it's going to create an actual hole in the middle of our cup. So what we want to do is select this point here and get it dead center on the X axis. So to do that, I'm going to come to our vertex menu here, click it, and hit set position. And now we can numerically tell it on the X axis, which you can tell here in the viewport, we know he's on X. I want him to be dead center of our scene. So zero, enter. And that just shifted the guy right there to the center. And I'm going to move him up a little bit so that curve is flat here. Come down, spacebar, drop my tool, lasso select this other point and run that command again, set position, X. We, now we could have done both of those selected at the same time. I'm just showing you a little bit how do we do that. Clearly the cup is upside down. We'll rotate that in a second. But now I'm going to zoom out and let's actually create the polygons um, for this cup itself. So that curve is actually a polygon. So if I go to a polygon menu, you'll see if you just select that, that's a one long sort of uh, polygon chain. So we're gonna wanna select that guy. And now we're gonna come to our duplicate menu. So we're gonna create geometry. So a lot of our cloning tools and duplication tools are gonna be all found in this scene. And we wanna run the first command, radial sweep. Um, if I just click in the UI, you saw I didn't click dead center. So at radial sweep that way off here on, on the edge. So what I wanna do, is sweep it on Y, yes. I want to sweep it dead center. Um, so we can numerically type that down here in the action center of our scene. So you always want to, when you're doing these precise modeling things, you want to always numerically tell it to be zero, zero, zero. Um, and you can see it created quite a bit of geometry in here. I don't think we need that much geometry. So that's this uh, count here. So if I spin that down, um, you'll see we went back to our eight sided one. In this case, I don't know, maybe let's just, let's actually do this without subdividing this mesh. We'll actually add quite a bit of heavy geometry to that scene. Actually no, let's keep it down around eight and we're still gonna hit tab on this guy. Now you can tell you created a lot more of these vertical spans here, and that's just due to the way our curve interpolated at um, when we froze it. But right now I think we got enough to work from. So I'm gonna hit spacebar, drop my tool. Uh, as you can see here, the polygons are flipped the wrong way. So we already saw that earlier, coming to the polygon menu, choose flip, or just hit F in the UI. And now we hit tab. Now we've created that nice curve uh, mesh. Now personally I think, um, well before we get too long, let's just rotate this guy around. So if I E to rotate, now if you hold control when you rotate, it's gonna snap those to 15 degree increments, or you can manually type in 180 degrees 
We just wanted to rotate that back on its axis. Now, since we're using this subdivide tool at render time, I don't think we need this many vertical spans. Um, the reason I say that, it's going to be harder to kind of edit that curve later on. We might want to make this a little bit wider in areas. And if we did that, it's going to be a lot harder to select you know, these loops. And if I want to scale them a little bit, you know, start creating these kind of hard, round shapes. So I want to lose a little bit of this uh, vertical edges. So to do so, I'm going to come right down here to the bottom. And I want to delete um, every other one. So I'm going to hit 2 for edge. Select one edge here. Skip the next one. And if I hit up arrow, it's going to continue that edge um, selection. See, as I hit up, it's going to continue to skip that one polygon. Or I mean that one edge. So I'm going to just hold, if you even can just hold it. And we're going to select that all the way out and around. Because we're going to delete these in a second here. So we don't need that many uh, vertical spans. So now that we have every edge selected, I'm going to hit L on the keyboard to loop that selection. We're going to come to your select menu and choose um, loop. There we go. Now deleting polygons is really simple in Moto. All you got to do is hit backspace, and we or not just polygons, edges, and we just deleted those guys. Um, likewise, if I had a polygon selected and wanted to get rid of it, I could just hit delete. Um, it sounds pretty simple, but coming from other applications, that's actually a little bit difficult to initially wrap your head around. Um, and really what we're looking for is sort of even topology. So I like the sort of spans we have here. It might be a little tight at the bottom. Let's not worry about it. I want to delete this guy, so I'm going to double-click this edge, hit backspace. The top has quite a few here, so I'm going to double-click, hold Shift, get both those, backspace. There's way too many in this curve here, so let's one double click those guys and just start deleting them. We don't need them. As we saw in the other example, the first clip, we got away with quite a few uh, curves. So I'm going to do that again, hit every other one, up arrow to grow that selection, L for loop, backspace, and we're still holding a really nice tight form. You know, it's the exact same profile as we had before, but a lot less polygons. And why do we want that? It's just a little bit easier to control this curve if we wanted to. We don't have to select all those. We can, only, we can select one or two of these and make that curve a lot nicer. To be honest, we could probably get away with about half as many, but for now, we'll leave this as is. And just knowing the shape of my glass, I think we're a little bit too tall here. So I'm going to scale it down. And there we go. Just scale it a little bit. And that's a little bit more proportional to what I expect that glass to be. But to be honest, I think the bottom here is still a little bit too long of a curve. I want this to be a shorter span. So if I just right click in uh, vertex mode around these points, and if I put my, hit R for my handle, right now my handle is right here at the bottom. So if I scale it, they're all going to scale close to that handle. But what I want is to scale it from this top point here. So if I just click and don't pull, you can see my handle jumped to that area. Um, so if I clicked it up here, the handle's going to scale to there. Now if I scale all the way, they're going to scale close to where my handle is. Um, so I want to get it right above those polygons. Again, don't click and pull. If I click and pull a little bit, it's going to scale, as you can see here in the numeric field. So I want to click right here and just pull on the y-axis and just close these guys up just a little bit. So it's a little bit more round or not quite as long of a curve. I like that. It's looking pretty close to what the final one is. To be honest, we might want a little bit more of a profile uh, sunken in here. So to do that, I'm going to double click this edge, delete them. We have too many down here. Double click, delete them. Double click, nope. double click and delete. And now I can take this guy here, hold R and scale it proportionally in and create a little bit more of a curve there. If I move it down and Y, you can just see we're kind of just defining this curve 
And we're doing this all while it's hitting tab in that subdivided workflow. So I'm going to pull it up. Again, we don't need all that geometry to create a curve. So we have real loose geometry here. Just this one curve, I select them in. We can start really defining that shape. It's going to interpolate between this edge and the other one when we're in that tab subdivided mode. And we can refine that curve. We can refine our shape all you want. But more or less, this is what I was looking for in that example. All right. That's it for the outer glass of this guy. But we want to do the liquid for this one as well. But as you notice, the liquid on this one is not quite the same because the glass actually needs to be rotated on the ground. So I'm going to hit save, save my scene. And before I get too long, I'm just going to, so because once we start moving, the, rotating these polygons, I'm not going to be able to go back and edit those. Um, unless we did it in item mode. So if I went to, this is kind of a little bit on the difference between items and um, components, polygons. If I rotate this guy, and let's say move him into place, I might never be able to get that back to dead center. Say I want to do some curve refinements or some other things, I'm never going to get this guy perfectly aligned right back to where he was. So I'm going to undo these real quick. But the beauty of uh, rotating it in the item mode itself, or item selection, is so I'm going to select it in an item component. Now we're actually affecting this layer here, not the components inside. Um, so if I rotate it in item mode, you'll see here on the item properties, it actually creates a numeric input. And at any point in time, I can come back and zero that out. And that's going to put our item, this whole thing here, not just the po polygons inside, right back to zero. So that, you know, that's the way I like to work and think about working is I model in a component mode, verts, edge, or polygons, but I move our item into scene into the scene or I lay out that model into the scene using the item itself. That way we can always zero him back. Um, there's again no way to zero the polygons back. Um, I can't always zero the item itself. So I always uh, move my object in the scene in the um, item type itself. So let's rotate it on item mode, move it in item mode, and just kind of get this guy laying on its side. That's the kind of the nature of these glasses. They're a little funny and you know they start wobbling around the table. I don't know. It just creates I don't know a little bit more fun and drinking experience. But you might have seen these before. They're more of a novelty, but this is the sort of glass we're using for this scene. So there we go. Now we have our item positioned flat on the ground plane, but at any point in time, we can come back and zero out any of these fields and get our object back. So let's get the liquid inside again. We already know how we did that before, that's going to be a little bit different this time. So this time, let's select these inner polygons. We saw that before by shift up arrow. And we want to grow those all the way to the top. Copy those polygons, make a new mesh layer, and paste them in. But this time, we can't just, I'm going to turn off my glass just so we only look at the liquid. Again, hit F to flip those so we see them facing us. This time we can't just close the loop because the water actually has to uh, be level in our scene or in the world space. If I just close this loop like we did before, you know, the water would not be that way. It needs to be naturally be cut along um, an axis. So I'm going to hit uh, Tab to unsubdivide this. And now we're going to look at some of the um, slicing tools to create a nice hard vertical line um, for our water line that we see here. Again, that needs to be uh, perpendicular with the ground. So we'll find that tool back in the basic menu under Slice. And if I just click and pull, basically we just knife, we're knifing 
you can see here, and we're adding an edge all the way through the item. Um, so I don't, I want it pretty much almost to the top of the glass. But you can tell it's not actually level here. So we can either go back and when I click and pull, I can hold control. Remember control constrains. So control, control is going to constrain when you're drawing a primitive. It's also going to hold constrain as I'm drawing this edge out. So now we have a perfectly um, level cut. And if I just click anywhere in the center here, I can move that cut line up and down. So I'm going to move them up, to, you know, pretty high up in the glass. And if at any point, you know, one of those oops, handles got a little off axis, I can just notice what the Y was on this point. So the Y height is 3.5. I can copy that, come back to this guy, and paste them into that field. Now if I hit spacebar to, again, always drop your tool. Oops. Spacebar to drop your tool. Now we put a nice cut right down the center uh, that's level with the ground plane. So what we want to do is delete any of these top polygons that are above that. So I'm going to come into my polygon selection mode and just kind of draw around your scene. This is how you kind of paint your selection. And just hold shift now. Zoom in, hold shift, and just get rid of any of these polygons that are above that cut line. What do we do again? Nope. Hit delete, not backspace. D uh, delete, or backspace, I'm sorry, will leave the points, which we don't want. Delete on the keyboard will actually get rid of those points because we don't actually want to keep those points. So now if I turn my glass back on, now you can see we have, um, or hit tab, it's a little funky because it's interpolating differently. This is going to take some refining to get these right back into place. So if I hit tab, you'll notice these edges are a little bit off. So I want to grab those guys, move them over in X. Just due to the way that this is interpolates, it's going to be a little funky. Um, you can tell it's too wide here in the bottom. So I just want to kind of grab some of these points here. Grab some of these points here. Now, unless you're kind of experienced moto modeler, um, you might want to stick with just the other um, glass type. But if I select both these edges here and I start scaling them over, we want to kind of get those right into place of between those edges. We don't need these ones. I'm going to hold Control, delete, select those ones, scale them in, and we're just trying to get this liquid back in the center of our glass. Um, tell these ones are still poking through. Select those, move them over, and work our way through. So it's just a matter of really getting these points, refining them, and trying to fit them back into that glass shape. See this one here. We select two on opposing edges or opposite each other. You actually scale them in instead of having to move. Both sides equally, just scale. You want to pull them in. Just start working them slowly. It's going to take a little bit of time. Deselect this too. A little bit of time to get them all back into place, but looking pretty good there from what I can tell. Might even come back in later once we actually add the glass material to see how those actually perfectly line up. But for now, those look more or less like they're in the right place. More or less. Bring them over. And the fun thing about this, I noticed they actually don't need to be perfect. If you look at the render here, they aren't actually totally always level and always totally, totally perfect, but that kind of creates this real fun sort of nice edge uh, that you're going to get with water as it's kind of tension building up on top of the ice cubes and stuff like that. But not having that actually perfectly um, parallel edge um, to the ground, it's going to give it a nice little bit of a wobble uh, in there and just kind of break up the harsh CG-ness of it all. But you do want to get them pretty darn close. So now that we have that, we need to close that top polygon. We saw how to do that earlier by double-clicking those edges, and let's see what happens when we hit P. Well, it's a little dirty, but 
what we want to do, so we again, we just hit all those edges, P to polygon. Now what we want to do is bevel, hit B. We want to bevel those edges, which we saw earlier. So now it's adding some nice um, hard edge to that sub subdivision. And that really just kind of closed it up there. Hit tab, take a look at the mesh. Tab again, and now that he's totally closed, you can tell, you know, once again, you're going to have to go move and push and pull a few points to get that liquid totally into place. But as I mentioned before, it doesn't quite need to be perfect. And as we showed in the last example, we want to scale that up just a touch. So hit R, scale it up, just so it kind of inner breaks that, um, or inner penetrates those two glass walls. Again, it will make more sense at render time when you actually see it working. So now if I hold shift and see both of those, oh, we can see some problems here. We can see that those are actually totally breaking through a little bit too much. So let's jump in here. I can tell it's this point's a problem, which means the one on the other edge is a problem. Let's scale those guys in. Hold shift, let's look at both meshes together. Still an issue here. Um, make sure you don't select any of the points on the cup itself. And just start working your way through. I guess go into the ice layer, I mean the liquid layer. Look at the cup. Now by holding shift and selecting both items, we're seeing them both in this shaded solid viewport. But the problem is we might actually grab some of the points on the cup when we're doing that. So if you want to see both your items shaded in the same sort of style, you want to go to your view options. So to activate that, hit O, uh, which I saw earlier, hovered over this particular viewport. And down here on the bottom of the, me uh, the menu is this uh, inactive item meshes. Right now it's set the shading style wireframe. So that means whatever ones we have don't have selected in the item list are going to be a wireframe. What we can do is we can just come up to this top and say, make inactive same as active. I click that. Now even though we're on the, the glass mesh, you can see the liquid is shaded as solid as well. Vice versa, if you look at the, the uh, liquid, uh, we don't actually have the glass selected, but they're, they're both drawing the same. And this is going to be really useful, actually, right now, for us to pick and pull. Right now I'm going to select these edges. Let's look at where those are selected. And just start pulling those back in. It's a little hard to see what we're selecting there. I'm going to delete that edge. There's too many edges on that top. When we did that bevel, we just added a little bit too many. So I'm going to drop, delete both of those. Put that other layer back on so we can see what we're doing. Pull them into play. Again, this is just a lot, a little bit more refining to get this glass type and the liquid working. So if you don't feel like going through all this manual labor, just stick with the other sort of more generic last, but I wanted to show you both regardless. Again, we're just grabbing edges or components, points, edges, whatever, and just scaling them into place. It's like this point here, which I'm sure there's another one that matches there, and just pick and pull. Just do the nature of that cut. When we made that harsh cut across it, it kind of created some kind of uh, dirty geometry, we can call it, with a bunch of triangles. Uh, normally, when you're doing sub D modeling, you always want to keep things in nice, you know, these nice quads, nice even space sort of topology. But when we did that cut, you know, it created all this sort of uh, bad triangles and really nasty geometry. Um, sure, there's other ways to model this, but as I noticed in my example, Getting those sort of ripples and stuff really isn't a bad thing when we go into render time. 
So I think we've refined that enough for now. There's nothing poking through the cup. And I think we're good to go. So now we have two different glass types. Well, let's name this one here as well. Do this. Whiskey O2. And I'm going to group those guys again. Uh, before we added that locator type, uh, group locator, there's a shortcut by just selecting both of these in the item list and doing a control G. And that will create the group and drop both of those items in the group. So that was the shortcut this time to create items in a group. Call these cup O2. And now we have one glass type here, another glass type here. And you can tell they're both totally out of scale. But we'll work on that later when we're actually setting up our scene. So there we go. Two different uh, modeling techniques uh, to get two different glass and liquid variations. Uh, next, next step up, let's take a look at modeling some and sculpting some ice cubes.